Tune in bi weekly on social media to hear the word of the Lord through Pastor Woodfield. Join us and be empowered by the word of the Lord unto you. Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Whitfield welcoming you to our Wednesday night time in the word segment on this Wednesday, October 29, 2014. Thanking you for tuning in and watching us. We pray if the word of the Lord is a blessing unto you that you would share us with your family members and friends and consider subscribing to our channel, so even sending us emails, letting us know how this broadcast has been a blessing unto you as we go into the word of the Lord together. Tonight, we're going to be looking at Jethro, the father-in-law of Moses. And we're going to be going to Exodus, the fourth chapter. We're going to be looking there also, Genesis, the 28th chapter. And Exodus, the uh, 18th chapter, starting at verse 1. So let us read the word of the Lord from Genesis, the 27th chapter, and the 8th verse. And then we'll look at Exodus, the fourth chapter, and the 18th verse, starting there. So now, therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Then going to Exodus, the fourth chapter, verses uh, 18, starting there, and we'll look at verse uh, 19, if time permits, uh, but mainly our focus is going to be on verse 18 of the fourth chapter of Exodus. And it reads, And Moses went and returned to Jethro his father-in-law, and said unto him, Let me go, I pray thee, and, and return unto my brethren which are in Egypt, and see whether they yet be alive. And Jethro said unto Moses, Go in peace. And the first thing we want to look at is Jethro is a man of wisdom. Those of you that know the story of Moses when he fled from before the face of Pharaoh, went and fled into the wilderness where he met uh, seven or eight uh, shepherdess women that were feeding their or watering their flocks who were accosted by another group of men who were also feeding their flocks. But Moses fought and defended the women because they were there first, but they were being taken advantage of by the men. So as a result, Moses came back, or, or the report got back to the women's father, and they asked him, where was the man that sport spared them today, that caused them to be able to water the flocks so quickly in the return? So he asked that they go get the man. They brought Moses into their family uh, abode, and Moses from there gained the trust and the respect of Jethro, his father-in-law, to the point that Jethro gave Moses one of his daughters to wed, and Moses was content to dwell with the man. So Jethro was not only just a man who had a, a daughters, but he was a man that was believed to be a leader. And also a man that was excellent in his wisdom and the, how he conducted his affairs and his respect within the community. So Jethro, his name actually means his excellence. Or he, was a, he also was a priest and believed to be a prince and a man of immense wisdom that stems from his life's experiences just because someone is older. In age and advance in years or has gray hairs does not equate to wisdom. I want to make that perfectly clear because many people that are of age are not wise. Today I found out that there was a, a woman that I thought was of a younger age but found out that she was much older, far older than what I had expected or anticipated or, or perceived and found out that this person Although they are older than what I thought, does not possess the wisdom of someone their age. And there have been situations where I've seen people that are much younger who possess the wisdom that supersedes their years or even their elders. And this younger person was able to speak into the lives of older persons and give them wisdom. So age does not always equate to wisdom, but in this case, this man, because of his life's experiences, because of his walk, uh, because of his prestige and his community, and because of many things, was a man of wisdom. So his years equated to his knowledge level, as well as his ability to disseminate information to others 
and to properly and appropriately communicate certain things so that people would know how to live their lives. And because of his wisdom and because of his respect for Moses, Moses also generated within his heart a deeper level of respect for his father-in-law, Jethro. And as a result, when Moses had an encounter with the burning bush, and he knew what God was saying to him, that God was sending him back to Egypt to deliver his people. Notice that the very first conversation with a human being that Moses had was with his father-in-law. And Moses went and returned to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said unto him, let me go, I pray thee, I beseech thee, and return unto my brother which are in Egypt, and see whether they be yet alive. And Jethro said to Moses, go in peace. Moses, because of his level of respect for Jethro, and having been in his company and presence, and under his covering for 40 years, as a show of respect, went to him, and in essence what Moses is saying, I'm opening up myself to you, for you to release me to go. Many of us in ministry and in life need a fatherly spirit over us, one who is one that walks in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and at the appropriate season of our lives, can release us into the next area or the next phase of our walk in life or in the Lord or in ministry or assignment of ministry. One who has godly wisdom, understanding, and sensitivity to the will and the mind of the Lord for us that will recognize when we have approached them that this is the will of God concerning us. And when it is the will of the Lord, notice what Jethro's response was. And Jethro said to Moses, go in peace. This was a dual point of respect. This is the two men saying, I know who you are. I understand your character. I know your motives. I know that this is the will of God concerning you. And without question." I'm releasing you in favor to return. Now notice, there are many questions that Jethro could have asked Moses as of this point had he not had respect for him and had not perceived that it was the will of God. And we who are Christian fathers as well as natural fathers, when we have perceived that this is not the will of God concerning someone, then we should, by right, question the motives, the reasons, the rationale, the logic to gain a better and proper understanding as to why an individual and not release them until we are satisfied within our spirit that this is the mind of God. Too many times we release people and they are not fully matured for life. They are not fully matured for godliness. They have not developed to the point that they could walk in ministry and be sustained in ministry. And nor do they have the capacity or the wherewithal or the spiritual knowledge base or the prayer life 
or the study life to sustain them. Nor are they a magnet that causes men to be attracted not to them, but to the God in them. For vision to mature and to walk in it. Nor have they been released because God himself has not given them a godly assignment to step out by any means. So instead of their walk being a walk of faith, it becomes a walk of sheer foolishness. Because God has not released them or spoken to them or given them an assignment that will cause heaven and earth to be moved. Let me say that again. Because God has not given unto them or granted them an assignment or granted unto them the oil of God. To be able to shake the strongholds of the devil. Because everything we do, the Father, Jesus declared it. He does not do anything without being in direct communication and been, having been released by God the Father. To do exactly what the Father has stated unto the Son to do. And we're living in a day and age where people don't want to be fathered by wisdom. So not only was this a show of respect on Moses and Jethro's part. But this was also knowing that this man has only has not only sustained me through the years by his graciousness and by the bountifulness of his supply, but also he has not only been a father-in-law unto me, but he has befriended me as a man and has made certain impartations into Moses' life that Egypt first and foremost put in him. But he also served to be a corrector of erroneous information to eradicate the thinking of the Egyptians from out of Moses' spirit and soul to give him a godly center focus upon life, the ways of life, the ways of God, and the ways of living in the wilderness, which he will ultimately return to, to lead the people throughout the duration of their wilderness experiences and instill in Moses the necessary knowledge base and wisdom to how to live in such an environment and to be able to have an encounter with God so that he would be leaving his care and his protection. Moses was also saying, I need your blessings as well as your level of trust. To know that when I leave here, I'm not leaving here to return to the mindset of Egypt. I'm not leaving here to leave from under your covering and your friendship or to be separated from your daughter. But I'm going to walk in integrity within understanding, understanding what my purpose is. And I want you to know what my purpose is so that I can receive your blessings. Too many sons leave without their father's blessings. And in ancient biblical times, the pronouncement of a blessing over a son was extremely 
extremely powerful that God himself would honor it in such a way, hear me clearly, that everything that knew that God was in it had to obey. The pronouncement of a blessing of a father when he understands the purpose of his son and he sees the purpose of his son and he can release his son into his purpose and the pronouncement of the blessings over that son will cause things to happen. It will cause blessings to come into one's life. It will cause favor to come into one's life. It will cause every defeated place that will potentially come that child's way, that son's way, to be overthrown in the forward progression and movement and momentum under that son's foot who remains and consistently having the framework of their mind that they will not be complacent for the will of God in their lives. He understood, Moses understood, that the verbalization of Jethro's agreement would work in concert with his efforts back in Egypt. He didn't need Jethro in that moment to fight him or to resist him when God was releasing him. Now, people of God, if you have a father, spiritual father, that is asking you questions about your purpose, and you believe that they're standing in defiance against you, here lies the opportunity for you to sit quietly before the Father, God, and question Him. Is this my season? Have you revealed it to me? Or am I deceiving myself? Or has the enemy decided to deceive me to step out prior? to the initiation or the beginning of my true season? Am I about to enter onto dangerous ground that I'm not yet matured or prepared to? And my father, spiritual father here on earth, is seeing it properly. And do I need to go back and resubmit myself and be careful about the processes and careful about my responses and consider the questions and the weightiness of each and explore the heart of the Father willing to guard and protect and properly guide me to the point and the place where I should be. Understanding the Father's motives is key. Many times some of us don't fully comprehend or understand the motives of our Father's heart to teach us an invaluable lesson to prepare us for a greater purpose. So he was going, he wanted them to know that he was going to accomplish the will of God. One of the major questions a father should ask. Are you going to accomplish the will of God? How do you intend on accomplishing it? 
What are the things that stand as a snare to the fulfillment of the will of God in your life? What issues do you have that are yet unsettled? What struggles are you still yet dealing with? What sins have not been defeated in your life? that could ultimately resurface in full strength and cause your disgrace to be seen and known by many. What days and hours and nights have you spent fasting and praying and in the word of the Lord and consecrating yourself and preparing yourself and laying aside every sin and every weight, that thing that did so does so easily beset you. And have cleansed your heart before God. And feeling the power of God in your heart to know that you have been made freed from all sin. And there's no shackles, no chains, no residuals of it in your heart because you took the advice of a father in Zion. But he wanted to know that he was running from, not running from his duties or responsibilities. A father wants to know, are you going to be man enough or woman enough to stand by your earthly responsibilities? Not only just in ministry, but your true ministry begins at home. Are you taking care of your home? Are you taking care of your wife? Are you taking care of your children? Are you taking care of your bills? Do you have a good reputation amongst the community and in the workplace? Have all unresolved issues been resolved? Or are you still progressing positively? down the path towards resolution. When trouble comes your way, is your temperament kept in check? Do you become angry easily? Are you easily provoked? Or are you loving, patient, compassionate, willing to entertain the saints and don't view a person's problems when they come to you as a bother and an interruption to your day. But you understand it's the will of Christ and the words of Christ to, the, to his disciples. I have meat and drink. My meat and my drink is to do the will of my Father. There is nothing more exciting in all of the earth than to do the will of God. To encourage someone that is broken. To lift someone up whose head is hung down. To encourage them, to motivate them, and fight on their behalf that God would hear their cry and their prayer. And to Fight the devil off of them. And to make a godly impartation and deposit into the depths of their spirit that will anchor their soulish realm into the will of God. It goes on to say that his heart was heavily of the unknown. Listen, when a father truly loves you, his heart will be heavy. When they could see the heaviness of the anointing on you prior to having released you, their hearts 
will retain you in their prayer and still in your journey a purpose will consistently, persistently cover you because you will never leave the depths of a true father's heart. When a father loves you, when it's time for you to move on, they will still love you. Until God himself removes you out of their spirit and release you and tells them to release you because your assignment has changed. They were seasonal, but there are also permanent persons that will always have a place and a spot in the Father's heart. To cover them. Many of you are seeking leaders to cover you. You need to find someone with a fatherly spirit. Now the mothers are nurturous, yes, but spiritually the fathers in Zion were the nurturers in the word of God. No slight against females in ministry. But we need fatherly spirits. Exodus 18 and 1. So when Joseph wrote the priest of Midian, Midian, Moses' father learned, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel, his people, and that the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. Then Jephro, Moses' father-in-law, took Sapphira, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back, and her two sons, of which the names of the one was Gershom. For he said, I have been an alien in a strange land, and the name of the other was Eliezer. For the God of my father, said he, was mine help, and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. This was Jethro's, in essence, validation upon Moses that God has utilized you mightily. Let me share this with you. Whenever you have been released by a true fatherly spirit, when you return unto them, they should see how productive in the work of the Lord that you have been. A true father will keep his ears open to hear what his sons are accomplishing. And they don't want to just hear the good report. They want to hear the full report. And when they hear the full report, the full report gives credence and value to the worthy, worthiness of that son. That's why the parable talks about the three servants to whom one was given ten talents, to one was given five, and to the other was given one. But the one with the ten and the five, they worked it. Where the one with the one hid it and became an embarrassment to the father, to the owner. We must learn that we are first and foremost to give honor by our lives and our service unto the Lord, first and foremost to Him, to make Him proud of us. And secondly, to the earthly fathers in the kingdom that have released us to flourish in those ministries. That gives validation for the reasons of our departure 
And it shows the proof in our returning. This is what God has done to bless me. Everything that we do must serve a purpose. Everything that we must do must serve a purpose. And just as I'm sitting here, God has reminded me over and over again that the purpose of following Him is to be fruitful and to multiply and to reach to those to whom we're called. Month to date, consistently sitting down and recording two messages a week. God has blessed our hands in this ministry to reach 118 countries. And all 50 of the United States with views of our messages. 345 of them messages exist on social medias, amongst multiple social media platforms. Facebook, we have two pages. One has already maxed out at over 5,000 friends. The other one, within a matter of just three weeks, is already at 3,800 friends plus, with over 300 yet waiting to be approved. We're not boasting and bragging. We're boasting and bragging on God. What he has done with someone that is just obedient to follow the will of the Father to return and to prove the profitability of having been released to do the will of the Father. Moses left from Midian, Jethro's house, with his wife and his son. And Aaron met them on the way. And now he returns with over a quarter million or half a million people. Wow. Wow. Just because he chose to obey the voice of the Father God and gain respect from his father Jethro and just didn't leave as a rogue in the middle of the night as a thief still in the way in embarrassment and in shame but chose to left in the light with the blessings of his father and was highly profitable. That God himself was with him throughout the entire process and has not only been with them through that process, but when he returned to Jethro, he returned with him. When you have been properly released and to return, God shows up in full strength with you, that your father will look up and say, wow, how exciting, God is really with you. Not only have you returned with this host, but I can see the visibility of God with you, on you, and in you, and working through you. What a powerful testimony in and of itself. When God is manifested in you and no one has to say anything to you and they'll look at you and they know that you are the real deal. Not because of you, let's make it clear. But because of the God in you that has decided to use you. Because you have decided to yield at the overwhelming 
evidence of God's existence that was laid out before you barely made claim, plain, not barely, but openly and plainly that there cannot be a refusal from you. Only full acceptance. Only full acceptance. That is a major crucial thing. When God himself shows up in you and proves to others just imagine those that were talking in Jethro's camp. <laughs> he left. He sent his wife and child back. He ain't coming back. God ain't with them. Can you just imagine the mouths of the of the suit of the sayers of gossip being shut up when they hear the reports? And the reports are validated by the showing up of Moses and the people of God that have been made free. And the presence of God is with them, leading them. That even everyone that they came in contact with saw the visible presence of the almighty God with them. Some of you who have left your father's houses by the will of God at a proper season God is going to have some of you to return and many of you may never return. But when you do show up with God God leading the way. And you won't have to open up your mouth to justify the reason for your departure. The evidence will be there. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. You left in hope and came back sustained by the evidence that came with you. There is a fathering spirit in many of you that need to be nurtured. And some of you need to be fathered and to sit at the foot, feet of a father and reconsider your timing and go back to your prayer closet and ask the father, did I hear your voice? Or is this my own self-will's motivational to get out of a situation that is not your will nor your timing? Lord, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. In this earthen vessel, point to yourself. In this earthen vessel, let your kingdom come. Your will be done. In earth and on earth as it is in heaven. And give me this day my daily bread that I will be filled up to capacity. And weighted down that I cannot be moved till the bread begins to work strength and maturity and yieldedness 
in me. A true son that is properly prepared will be yielded to the voice of God. When God called me to do this ministry, I was completely yielded, not knowing the end results, not expecting anything, still yet had some comprehensions. But I knew the voice of God and chose to obey and to submit regardless of those who questioned or thought that I had lost my ever-loving mind. But I know the voice of God and I choose to be obedient to the will of God, my Heavenly Father. And when my Heavenly Father has changed His command or His orders, then I will move graciously by His will into the next assignment for my life you must consider the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. God has placed a Jethro in your midst and all he wants you to do is learn from the Jethros in your life. God has great and mighty things we didn't even get a chance to get him through the scripture because I felt that's the way the Lord would have it for this evening. But once again, there is a need for fathers in the earth. I don't care what your view, or I do care what your view is of a father, but society at large has caused fathers to be cast in a negative light. But it's time that we return to the positivity of the true purposes of fathers in the lives of our children, in the lives of the church, and in the pulpit. We need fathers. And we need them to hear the will of God and return to that proper place in the kingdom. This is Pastor Whitfield saying, I just wish you all the best in the Lord. And if our messages are a blessing unto you, consider writing us. Our email address is fhlmrs12 at gmail.com. Our ministry phone number is 443-392-6898. You can call, leave us your message. You can text us. You can also post your likes to the social media site that you're watching us on. And for those of you that are watching us on YouTube, even consider subscribing to our channel and sharing us with your family members, friends, co-workers, associates, and church members and pastors. We're not here to draw membership away from the local assembly. We always emphasize that you should be a member of a local assembly where the man or the woman of God teaches the uncompromised truth of the word of God and is able to lead you into pastures of righteousness for the namesake of the Lord. And that you should become a good steward there by supporting that ministry, not only with your presence, but with your financial resources, your tithe and your offering, which is utilized to sustain the ministry and to propel it forward so that it can meet the visions and the need to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with others. And what are missions that God has assigned to that ministry? that you would be a partaker in propelling the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
and that you will grow and mature and come to know your calling. And when your season has come, your Father in Zion will release you to do greater works for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. I love you, saints of God, with all my heart. And I pray the blessings of God upon you, that you will be released from every burden and every obstacle, and that your needs shall be fulfilled. And that the God of all peace will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Until next time, We're saying unto you, be blessed in the Lord and be empowered by the word of the Lord unto you. God bless you. Tune in bi-weekly on social media to hear the word of the Lord through Pastor Woodfield. Join us and be empowered by the word of the Lord unto you.